Welcome to Startup Health TV, I'm Logan Plaster. Uh, here where I live in Baltimore, Maryland, I can go to some grocery stores and pay for my food by waving my phone over a sensor. Advances in digital payments like Apple Pay and PayPal and Venmo have revolutionized commerce, really changed the way that we pay for things. But healthcare hasn't exactly kept pace. One trip to the doctor and primary care physician can result in what feels like reams of paper bills and all the confusion that goes along with that. My guest on today's interview is Drew Mercer, the CEO and co-founder of Payground, a startup that joined Startup Health in 2020. Drew and his team are trying to change this equation by making it easy for patients to pay their bills online and simple for medical practices to collect in the same way. In our interview, we'll discuss the life event that pushed Drew into this endeavor, as well as the news of their recent capital race. Stick around. Drew Mercer, a CEO and co-founder of Payground. So excited to have you with me today on Startup Health TV. Thank you, Logan. Pleasure to be here, man. Excited to hear about what you're working on. Um, so you're innovating in the medical payment space. You're making it easier to pay and get paid in healthcare, which is huge. Um, but I want to start before we get into the product, or what you're building or the news. I want to get into the challenge that you're addressing, this pain point. Why was medical payment something that you were willing to give up the relative comforts of, I'm assuming a nine to five job, to go into this crazy world of, of healthcare startups. Why was medical payments uh, the, the thing for you? Yeah, yeah. So um, there was two, I, I would say, paths to kind of pay ground uh, for me. Uh, so the first, I've been a healthcare revenue cycle guy my whole career. So started out in sales and then I was fortunate enough to kind of grow into sales leadership, business development, um, but it wasn't until 2018, that second path, um, in which we had at the Mercer home, a couple of significant health events. Uh, the first was I was diagnosed with testicular cancer and uh, thank God we caught it early, um, had to have surgery of course, but didn't have to have chemo or radiation and been now almost three years cancer-free. Um, the second event at that time, just a couple of weeks later, is my wife and I had the birth of our third kiddo. His name's Augie. And um, between those two, have been inundated with medical bills um, through the mail. We would be opening up, you know, several a day. And I think over time, just within a couple of months, it was, it was over 20 between the birth and the cancer. And uh, just kind of putting that, that lens on of um, my, my revenue cycle and healthcare experience uh, with that personal experience. And then having that new lease on life that, hey, I overcome cancer, um, I wanted to do something different. And so I think that this is ripe for disruption. I think anybody that's listening here can, can relate that healthcare, paying your healthcare bills is not easy. It really does suck. Um, and so we're here to simplify it. For any viewer, let's say on YouTube, who's not in the industry, give me like a brief primer on revenue cycle management, since you just yeah. mentioned that was your previous experience. Sure. So yeah, revenue cycle is basically from the moment uh, you enter your uh, doctor's office and now telehealth, right? Through means like we're talking now um, to the to the doctor. So uh, the insurance eligibility uh, to the application of the insurance to patient out of pocket costs, that whole cycle um, is really what revenue cycle in healthcare means. Got it. Okay. So you experienced the problem. You're like, these bills this stinks. I shouldn't be getting these all by paper bills, especially when now I can go to the grocery store and like tap my phone and pay for something. There's, there's something wrong here. That's so, right. yeah. uh, so then give me a little glimpse of what that journey was like to go from inspiration to, uh, you know, that initial perspiration. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think that through, throughout my career, I was fortunate enough to, to just meet, you know, really good people. Um, and I've always been a believer in whatever job you have, you just, you know, try to be a good guy, good gal, or role you're in. And if you leave a company, you leave well. You leave well. Um, and so, and that was my, you know, my philosophy. And so when Payground kind of came into my mind, um, I was, you know, I had a, a Rolodex of people that I just immediately said, hey, this, you know, this person would be good in this role. This person would be good in this role. And um, I think the vision of what we we're trying to solve just resonates with people. Um, and I think that everybody can say, wow, that's pretty cool. If we can, if we can fix this, that, uh, 
that that could be meaningful. Okay, well, that's a good segue into talking about what you actually built. What yeah. is Payground? Uh, why should people care? Yeah, so our overall vision in the short time we have today is we're working to get patients and medical providers on the same payment platform. And there's a lot of backend architecture that has to go into it, right? Um, you know, it's pie in the sky if you think you can wake up one day and just pay all your doctors through one through one application or one uh, website. Um, there's, you know, in healthcare, uh, what we that been in healthcare IT for for many years call silos. And there's a lot of different electronic health record systems that go into billing systems, and it's just fragmented. Um, and so, as you know, the healthcare space works to be quote consumerized. The financial aspect of it is, is lagging. Um, and so, what we've done is we've built an application in which we could be direct to provider and direct to consumer patient at the same time. And in real time, have uh, the accounting for the medical practice, the hospitals um, be updated. So uh, it's clean and easy for them to understand as well. Uh, paint me a picture of if I'm a, a, see a small practice and all of a sudden I have easier digital payments, what are some of the benefits to me? Yeah. So again, being that it's a fragmented space, there's hundreds of different options as far as billing systems or electronic health record systems. What Payground allows is you don't have to replace anything that as a medical provider you have today. We layer on top of and can integrate into whatever that solution is. Um, and we can go live in three business days or less. And so we can collect copays in person um, through physical terminals. And then we have a really a unique way of collecting post-visit accounts receivable through text notifications and email notifications. And it all it all rolls up into uh, Payground and they're able to um, reconcile that payments into their host billing system. Got it, got it. Um, I understand that you have some uh, recent news. So why don't, why don't you walk us through yeah. your recent uh, raise? So Again, very fortunate. Um, I think you know, it, as entrepreneurs, maybe listening to this too. The 2020 was was tough, and uh, we were we opened a round in March 2020. Um, <laughs> our round, and uh, it just I think I had 35 pitches to VCs in the in in that time, and um, I'm not I'm not afraid to say that we had a lot of no's, um, and I think there's a lot of noise in the payment space in general. Of like, hey, how are you unique? How do you do this differently? Uh, but we. Uh, found a few partners that uh, believed in us and what we're doing and our traction. And so we announced uh, just earlier this week, we raised uh, a $4 million seed round uh, via TriVentures and our follow-up investment was 630. What are you excited to do with those funds raised? So uh, hustle. So we're going to be uh, tripling the size of our team here in probably the next three months. Um, exciting to make even job offers the last few days to, to much needed roles in engineering uh, sales and marketing, and then, you know, customer success, account management. Um, 2021 is going to be a big year for uh, platform maturity for us. Uh, so we're putting a lot of focus uh, into uh, the engineering. Yeah, you mentioned digital payments being a crowded space and even within healthcare revenue cycle management. Um, help us un sort of unpack for me really quickly, kind of the difficulties for PayPal or Venmo, you know, as me as a consumer, why can't I just use Venmo to pay my doctor? Yeah, yeah, no. And I think these, some of these, you know, fintech companies have tried and are trying. Um, what, what's difficult is kind of what I alluded to um, at, at the top is, is the architecture on the back end. It has to be able to really reconcile back to that host system. Um, because if you don't, there could be, um, you know, payments that are made that don't get applied. And then the patients get, you know, notified that, hey, you still owe a bill, and then the patients are ticked off, and then the provider looks bad, and they're losing patients. And so really, it has to be um, a solution that works not only for the patient in the, in the convenience of making a bill or paying a bill through a PayPal or a Venmo type experience, uh, but it has to be able to be reconciled and applied back to that, that hospital system or, or physician practice system. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, what's kind of a profile of your typical, of your current partner and kind of who are you hoping to partner with? So we are, our go to market is a little different from some, you know, perhaps other players in the revenue cycle space. Um, 
And we, we're, we're starting more in the ambulatory, smaller independent physician practice. So these are your, you know, 10 doctor and under practices that aren't tied to a health system. Um, and there's some, there's, there's some strategy there, but there's also, uh, you know, we don't have the resources up front to go build this, you know, big uh, enterprise system that, that can solve problems for the for big hospitals out there uh, in the country. So we're starting small and we're moving up market and we have some some very exciting things coming just in the next six months uh, that's going to allow us to move up market uh, into the larger physician practices, uh, more the at-risk entities account, um, you know, uh, uh, larger accounts, and then also the hospitals down, down the road. One of the things I think is interesting about Payground is that you're located in Arizona and yeah. there's really just heavily weighted market towards the coasts and towards a couple yeah. of cities. Uh, do you think there's any interesting advantages uh, to to being located where you're at um, and not being in LA or New York. Yeah, I, I love right, the San underdog. Francisco. <laughs> right. I, I no, I hear I, I love the underdog aspect of kind of being in between the coasts. Um, I'm originally from the LA area. Um, so I, I gotta give a shout out to my my Dodgers, Lakers, Bruins. But um, I think that you know raising capital is probably the the toughest aspect of, of not being on either coast. Um, and now that we kind of, we've had, you know, some VCs believe in us, I think from here, it's just proven them wrong. The, you know, all the, all the, the naysayers out there. So, um, you know, there's talent here. There's, especially on the engineering side in the greater Phoenix area, there's a lot of talent here. I think with COVID, a lot of people are escaping the big cities and then moving to, you know, weather, um, you know, good, good weather areas and own as beautiful, nine months of the year and it's hot as heck <laughs> for three months, but that's when you go to the beach, right? So um, we're excited where we're at and we're, and it's a good ecosystem here. That's awesome. All right. Our, our, our last question here is, is what I call the, uh, if this works uh, segment, which is yeah. just looking out into the future. Uh, if you are able to succeed at these healthcare digital payments at scale at a way that truly uh, makes it seamless for doctors and for patients. Um, what are some of those like really awesome downstream effects that you that you'd like to see? Yeah, um, first and foremost, I got to speak to our mission, which is to simplify healthcare payments for individuals and families to allow them to spend their sanity on more important things. Right. So the downstream effect is just improving lives. And uh, you know, speaking back to my uh, the cancer days and and having our our third kiddo. Um, we had trouble paying all those bills, um, and just, you know, knowing what we owed and all that. And so if we were to remove the friction of, of having the, the, the financial constraints out of that season, that would have helped a whole lot. Um, so that, that is at the top of my mind. Secondly is it's just cool. I mean, if imagine using a Venmo type app to pay every healthcare bill and to understand how much. Uh, your insurance has been applied or what your path to deductible is um, just one tap payments is uh, is the vision. So um, convenience is, is going to be a huge downstream effect for the, for the patients. And, and lastly, just real quick, I think if providers were able to be paid quickly and not take on average 60 to 90 days to get paid, I think we can bring down the cost of health of healthcare services um, if we are able to get them paid r- real quick. So um, a lot of things that we we've, we've got on our you know on our radar to to solve. Well, I love that you're tackling those problems on both ends, the provider and the patient side. And it's music to my ears. Uh, I think everyone has dealt with the pain of paper bills and the confusion. So, uh, Drew, thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, thank you for taking the time to update us. Congratulations on the recent raise, and we're going to be watching to see what you do in 2021. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Logan. All right. Take care, Drew. Bye-bye.